Well, today we got a ton of work to get done on the FJ40. So the game plan for this video is we gotta get this frame stripped down. We gotta get every bracket welded in on the frame and then we gotta get this thing dropped off for sandblast. So we got a ton of work ahead of us. We're also waiting for a few parts to finish up the front bumper that we tackled in the last video. So I bought some tow hooks that are gonna weld in and then I'm still waiting for my winch to be able to cut all the holes for that, which isn't a huge deal, but I do want to get the tow hooks welded into this front bumper because the entire bumper is gonna be welded to the front of this frame. There's no reason I really see to make this thing removable just because it is out of the way of everything and it's just gonna be a lot stronger to have it welded into the frame. The only really downside I see is pulling the motor in and out we just have to jack up the motor another foot maybe to clear the, the hoop on the front of the bumper. So that's really the only downside I see to welding this thing in. But either way, we got a ton of work. So we're gonna pull axles, motor, tranny. We're gonna pull the entire cab off, get this thing stripped down, like I said, and weld everything in. Also, this frame is basically two C channels that are riveted together. Now I did box the rear end of this frame. The rear half of this frame going over the rear axle from the factory is is just a single C channel. There's no inside plating. So I did completely plate the inside of the frame and completely weld that in. Now I think that might cause some issues if I don't completely weld this frame together just because the rear end is so rigid and then the rest of the frame has got some movement just because like I said, it is all just riveted together and I would assume that would create a little bit of movement in the frame. Like as the frame twists and move around, I do believe there's going to be some inconsistencies in the frame and that might lead to some problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely weld this frame top and bottom all the way from the front to the back. I think that's really going to stiffen it up. Now we did also, when I did widen this frame, I plated the the middle of the frame for about uh, two feet and then the entire front of the frame is plated. So this frame has been plated. It's gonna be very strong, but I think the last step I need to take is completely welding the two C channels together from the front to the back just to tie everything together. Well, we got all the suspension out and we got our uh, alternator and power steering set up, all these brackets. Now, I already did open this up, I did check. We are gonna have to buy another bracket for the alternator because some blocks are missing a bolt hole right here, like the entire you know casting for it. So we're gonna use this, we need to drill and tap this, and then there should be another one here that's missing. You can see that bracket goes like that and we are missing a hole. So there's another bracket ICT makes that bolts on to here and here, I believe, and with some shorter spacers, and it has this hole. So I bought that, we're waiting for that, but that doesn't matter right now. What I want to check right now is the power steering because the power steering with this bracket is gonna be moved up on the head. So originally alternator was way the hell up here and the power steering was down here. So now alternator is gonna be right here. Power steering should be right here. And looking at the pictures, it looks like the top of the power steering pump is about the top of the valve cover. Now I want to make sure, I wanna double check that everything is gonna clear. So let's bolt on the power steering pump. We will have to press off this pulley to get the pump off the bracket and then we'll bolt that onto the new bracket and then you have to press that back on. It's kind of a weird deal, but that's how uh, GM made it. So let's just double check before we tear this thing down to where we can't um, with the motor and tranny out. And then, like I said, once we get the other bracket, we'll get everything lined back up, drill and tap that hole and we should, as long as that power steering pump clears we should be good on the entire like accessory system
Look at that guys, that makes me so happy. Everything clears amazing. The bracket clears the water pump. I was kind of worried about that. That clears and then we have a ton of space. So alternator is gonna be right here. That's not gonna be an issue. There's plenty of room down there. I also did check this side clearance for the uh, AC pump and it does fit. So I may use the AC compressor as an air compressor for tires and such. Uh, put a big tank in the back um, underneath. I am gonna be running the interior fuel tank that goes underneath the seat. It's, I got a brand new one, so I might as well use that. So we have a bunch of room underneath the truck that up in the back that we could probably rig up an air tank. So I may do that, but I'm stoked guys. We are good to go other than that one other bracket. So once we get that, we'll just have to do that later on. Uh, not a big deal, but I just wanted to make sure this is going to fit and we are looking perfect.
Well, that was a lot of welding. I'm about a day and a half into welding, but we just finished. And you can see that shitty looking weld right there. I ran out of gas, like literally within an inch of being done. So we are done welding. What I want to do now is I want to gusset a few mounts. I want to gusset these rear upper link mounts here. And then this upper here, the lowers are so tied in with everything. I'm not gonna worry about anything with that. But one thing we do gotta do before we gusset is flip this thing back over, drop the motor and tranny back in because the transfer case was really close back in this area here. I just wanna make sure our gussets are gonna clear. Um, it's gonna be super, super easy just to drop that in real quick and just double check our clearances for that. And then we'll gusset those and we should be pretty much done. Oh, we do have to cut the rear leaf mounts or the rear shackle mounts off the frame back there. And then I wanna try to straighten this Looks like at one point they caught something there. Um, so I'm gonna try to beat that thing back in, kinda try to straighten that rear little cross member out. And other than that, we are pretty much ready to go with this frame. Oh, I guess one other thing we can do is weld this bumper in. I don't have my winch yet, but we can still clearance all this with the bumper on. So that's one other thing I want to do. And then before we drop it off, I want to pressure wash the inside just because we're not gonna be able to sandblast the inside. I wanna try to get as much dirt and grime out of the inside of the frame. That way when we go to do our internal frame coating, the inside of the frame is nice and clean. And I wanna do that before we sandblast it because once it's sandblasted and we wash it with water, it's just gonna completely rust. So it's not a big deal for rust right now because it is getting blasted. We are finally done welding, other than when we got our winch, we just gotta weld this hoop in. Other than that, we are completely done. Now, I really, really hope we don't have to ever take this bumper off because we will absolutely destroy it because it is welded in extremely sturdy. I mean, every everywhere it's welded, inside, out, around the entire bumper. It's not gonna fall off, but if we ever have to pull it off for some reason, which I don't expect we do, it is not gonna be fun. Other than that, frame is ready to go. So um, I do, what I'm gonna do in the meantime right now is actually got in this other bracket. So this is what I was talking about. This creates 
a hole here. We bolt it onto there and there like that. We bolt on timing cover bolts and then we have to drill and tap a hole right here. So that'll bolt there and then the other bracket bolts onto this bracket. So should be pretty simple. Let's get this done. Uh, they give you a little template here that you bolt on for drilling the hole. So we bolt this on, then we drill a hole here, tap it and we bolt that on. And then after that, I just wanna get that taken care of. And then what I want to do is get the frame over here on the lift, get the cab out of the way, get the frame on the lift. And like I said, I wanna pressure wash as much as I can out of the inside of this frame, just to get it as clean as I can, because we do have an internal frame coating paint that we're gonna use. So I wanna get the inside of this frame as clean as we can. Well, it fits barely. So online, it said this winch was five and a, or 5.4 inches wide. And I think they meant this actual case right here is about 5.4. The actual, you can see this little uh, deal here is about six and a half. So we are super, super close, less than a quarter inch back here. The only thing that kind of sucks, but is not a huge deal, is these lugs are kind of kind of close. They're about a quarter inch away. Uh, so we're not gonna be able to get the cables on. What we'll have to do is just lift the winch up a little bit, put the cables on, and then drop it down and bolt it in. So it kind of sucks, but not a big deal. It fits, I'm happy with it. I did get a fair lead right here from uh, Summit Machine. This thing is looking sweet. So that's gonna go right on the front there like that. Gonna look really good there. Well guys, we got our first problem with this winch being, I pulled it all the way forward. You can see these rails that run down right here are right behind where I need to bolt the fire lead in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these nuts, I'm gonna stick them in there, which honestly, I cut those holes big enough so they'd have a little room, but those fit in there. I'm gonna pound that in there and I'm just gonna weld the nut in and then we'll have to shorten up these bolts. I guess that is the first of hopefully the last issues with this winch being so tight. Um, those gussets that I had aren't gonna work because like I thought, they're hitting that winch. So I think I might just, let's see. We probably could just move them out, trim them down a little bit and move them out a little bit, something like right there. I think that would work just fine.
Well guys, we are all loaded up on the trailer. I actually just picked up this trailer, as you can see. Uh, it's got a little bit of damage, but it's literally brand new. It's a 2022, uh, 20 foot, 10,000 pound. I got a smoking deal on it because it was rear-ended. But if you guys, let me know, if you guys wanna see me fix this thing, I'll make a video on it. But we gotta basically tear, we gotta cut this whole back part off tear the entire deck off because every crossbar that it the deck is screwed to it bent that as well and then it also bent it bent every single one all the way up to the front as well which isn't super bad but i think once we get the the wood right now is what's pushing that forward i think once we get the deck torn off that might come back or at least with a little bit of uh with a little bit of chain action on a come along i think we'll be able to straighten all these crossbars out but this rear one, um, I'm just gonna replace, obviously. I'm gonna rebuild all these ramp mounts. These little levers here got all screwed up, but let me know if you guys wanna see a video on this. Like I said, we gotta completely rip this thing apart. But like I said, it's a brand new trailer. Just needs a little bit of love. And I think with a few hundred bucks worth of steel, I think we can make it brand new again. But anyway, we are gonna bring this uh, frame in, drop it off. They said they could probably do it in a couple days, so it shouldn't be that long. We could get it blasted, we'll get it back home and get this thing painted. Well guys, frame is dropped off at Sandblast. I already got a call, they're already screwing stuff up. So when they lifted it with a forklift, those little clamps for my external reservoirs on the front, they bent those up. So I bought new ones, not a big deal. I just thought it was funny, they're already screwing it up. But hopefully, Sandblast turns out great. They did my last frame on the Hilux. That one turned out really good. I got confidence they'll do a good job at least sandblasting it. Well guys, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. Hope you enjoyed it. Why don't you go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one.